Hi guys, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll take another few seconds uh, and Sonena will be joining us for the first session. So we'll take another few minutes for everybody to join in and start. Uh, thank you so much for everybody who's logged in early. Uh, look forward to an amazing and wonderful session. Also, during the session, if you feel that you have some questions that you need to ask, there is a Q&A tab on the uh, uh, bottom of your screen. Uh, please feel free to type in your questions and I'll try to answer them shortly. Hi, Sunena. Thank you for joining in. Yes, I see you. Great. Um, hi. Hi, Sunena. Uh, I think we have a couple of people already for our first session. And I'm very excited to have you. And I welcome everybody to the first of its kind curated workshop for PCOS and hormonal balance. And uh, guys, for the first session, we have Sunena Reiki. She is a global yoga influencer and she's one of the most renowned yoga artists that we have in our country right now. She had the opportunity to represent India in the UN headquarters in New York and had the opportunity to uh, teach yoga to the global world leaders. Isn't it fantastic? And Sunena, I love your energy on your IGTVs and the way you <laughs> teach yoga. It's, it's contagious, your energy is contagious, and I hope that everybody enjoyed your session today. Uh, yes. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me, Nidhi. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and to really teach and make a difference. Great, so I'm gonna give you uh, the spotlight video and you can use it to adjust yourself. And here you go. So you are on the screen right now and everybody can see you, I guess. Okay, awesome. Can I have the bigger screen so that when I turn the camera around, switch to, okay. I'm on the bigger screen now, no? Yeah, yeah, you are at the center stage. Okay, perfect. And also in the Q&A section, we might have some questions from the uh, audience while you are showing uh, the yoga asanas for thyroid and you're going to speak. So I uh, probably at the end of the session, we have a five to 10 minute window we, where we can use those questions and you can answer them for our audience. Perfect. Looking forward. Okay, you can start away. All right, so we are doing thyroid guys. We are doing yoga asanas for thyroid. I actually want to give you guys pranayama as well. So I'm just turning the camera. Yeah, on it. Perfect. Okay, everybody's comfortable. Let's hop onto our mats. And you can sit on a cushion if you have one to just lift the spine up. I like to use a cushion. If you don't have a cushion, use the backrest. Just feel comfortable. Okay. Now, when we have thyroid, we really need to work with our thyroid glands, our parathyroid gland, and our pituitary gland. All these are really important. I'm going to first start this session 
with giving you pranayamas and later we'll come a little bit to the asana practice but if you can't do it what i'm teaching you now because if you're like say 50 years old and you can't do it you've never done yoga before i can't expect you to go into shoulder stand and halasana and all that i don't expect that uh, from you but let's start with what really really helps so let's just sit in a comfortable position Shoulders back, just roll back. Chest open so you can breathe. Just bring your hands to the heart center. We're going to chant a very, very soft form to start our practice today. So let's take a deep breath in. All right, my friends. Today, the first pranayama that we're going to learn is Ujjayi pranayama. So, Ujjayi is called the victorious breath, and the breath is taken in and out through the nose, but it goes through the throat. So, you can hear the breath. So, imagine you're fogging a glass. It's like Right, we can do that. Now imagine doing the same thing and taking the breath in. All right, now we will do it with our mouths closed. All right, so see how we do it. So this is a breath, it feels like an ocean sound. It's a kind of, you hear it, and come a little bit closer, but it's like this. All right, so this breath, we're back. This breath is really good to work your thyroid and your parathyroid. It also really helps with stress. So the moment you are stressed out, this breath, so if you breathe from your nose, it'll be a shorter breath. And if you breathe from your nose through your throat, it'll be a much longer breath, massaging the Vishuddhi Chakra. All right? So let's just do five more rounds. So close your eyes back straight. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. This is really my go-to. It's really become my breath. I've been doing yoga for the last 12 years and now I breathe like this. It also heats your body up. Sorry, I've been having such a bad uh, because of so many classes. All right, the second breath is Hastik. So you take in and inhale. You should be able to hear it. Okay, it's this loud, heaty breath and you exhale.
Yeah, so it goes like this. Okay, let's practice five breaths, five rounds. Begin with the inhale and the exhale, forceful. You can start with 10 to 15, do them three times. Do them, I mean, you really can start doing this breath wherever you are, just sit in a comfortable position and do three rounds of Vastrika. So, you know what they say, right, about Vastrika? Vastrika is the breath which kills the negativity and it burns the negativity within us. It's such a heaty breath that the heat burns away all the negativity. And when you're doing the Vastrika, you can see it's going in and out through the throat, massaging those glands. So very helpful. The third pranayama is Kapal Atma. We are going to do five rounds. I'm going to just show you first. In this round, you, your inhalation will just happen. It's spontaneous. You don't have to worry about it. But the exhalation is forceful. Okay? This will also really work, all of this. So let's begin. So just see the first round. You take a breath in and exhale through. Okay. So let's begin. This also burns fat from your belly. And but really, when you're doing Kapalbhat, you don't think about your body so much. Think about your forehead. Think about your pituitary glands. Think about your thyroid glands. Your whole attention should be on the opening in the top region of your body. So sitting tall, keep the lungs lifted, keep the chest inflated. And let's begin. Again, you're practicing it, you're learning it. This can be your go-to video to go back, pause the video and do the Kapal Bhattis. Again, the Kapals, you can start. Everyone is different. We are all different. Some of us have been doing this. I know some people who can do 1,000 Kapal Bhattis. Start with 15 to 20. Take a few breaths. Again, 20 to 30. Take a few breaths. Make it go up every day that you practice. Your resistance will decrease. You know what I mean? You'll be able to do many, many more. Brilliant one. Okay. I want to do one more because this works the pituitary gland. You really need to breathe from alternate nostrils, working and equalizing both sides of your hemisphere. The left side and the right side. Now the left side is your lunar energy, the moon energy, the soft, calming, feminine energy. And the right side is the solar energy, the sun energy, the heat, the force, the power, the testosterone. Okay? Now sometimes our right side is really working. Sometimes our left side is really working. And when you want also less stress in your body, going into Anilom Vilom, which is the Pranayama we do, which is alternate nostril breathing, will really help. Using your right hand, I'm going to show you in a very simple way. Just the thumb and the index finger, 
you're going to see one round okay and then we'll do five rounds so you're going to close your right nostril with your thumb you're going to inhale from the left seal the nostril pause exhale from the right inhale from the right seal pause exhale from the left that's one round so let's begin close your right nostril Exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Seal, pause, exhale from the left. Inhale from the left. Hold, pause, exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Hold, pause, exhale from the left. Inhale from the left. Hold, pause, exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Hold, exhale from the left. Inhale from the left. Hold, exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Hold, exhale from the left. Gently bring your hands. Just keep your eyes closed for a moment. Going into the Ujjayi Pranayama that we learned. Breathing from the throat. And gently open your eyes. Okay, this is more than enough really for a lifetime to practice this pranayama every single day. You can do each pranayama for five minutes, two minutes, ten minutes. It's pranayama, it's breathing exercises, which will really help to bring T3, T4, your TSH in balance and working the thyroid, the parathyroid and your pituitary. Now, if you can do the asanas, great. If you can't do it, work in modification. Okay, if you've never done it, I really don't want you to hurt yourself and go into Sarvangasana and because you've never done it, you know. But the first one, which I'm going to show you, is Sarvangasana. Now here I've got a blanket, my friends. So in the, with this blanket, because when you do Sarvangasana and you build your legs up, your back of your neck really squeezes when you're squeezing like this and it's not comfortable, your C7 in your spine should be a little bit lifted away from the ground and keep trying to move the chin up. Now, for the shoulder stand and the halasana, I don't want you to practice it right now. I want you to see how we do it. You can look at the video and practice it. Because the moment you try to look at the video while you're practicing, you can hurt your neck. Okay, I have to be very careful with you guys. Don't hurt anything. So if I take a blanket, you guys have a towel at home, two towels at home. I bring it into like three so that I have a thicker place to place my shoulders. Okay, so I place my shoulders on the edge of this. And then I place my legs. You can see there's a lot of gap here, between my head and the mat, so that it's not like this, okay? From here, 
you lift up, use your hands, and lift the body up. Now, I normally like to go down first in halas. I roll the shoulders in, and this pose is really, really good for thigh rolling. If your legs don't touch, and they're here, use your hand for support. Okay, now look at my chin. I need to pull the chin away. So I'm not squeezing, I pull it away, like a royal chin. So from Halasana, which is your first pose, you move into Sarvanas. Chin away, smile away. You can keep walking your hands down the spine. If you want to go into Halasana after Sarvanas, into this, you can keep your hands on the back or roll the shoulders in more and interlace the hands and place them on the floor only if your feet are touching the floor. And slowly using your hands, you will slowly come down. And release. Okay? All right, the third asana is Matsya asana. So what we did here was we were here. Now I need you to go opposite, really work in this gland. Now for beginners, normally I do it with Padmasana. You can do it with Padma Padmasana. But I understand most of us will be beginners here. So bend the knees first. Take your hands and take them under your hips and straighten the legs. So from here, you push the chest up, lift the head, and take the top of the head onto the mat. Shoulders back, chest lifted. And as you release your chin down, you relax. Move the neck over to the right. Move the neck over to the right. And back. Again, as long as you can hold it. From five breaths to five minutes, you can hold these poses. So as long as each person can hold it, don't think how much and this and that, hold it. You won't be able to hold it much longer than you come down. Slowly coming up. Fourth, Paschimottanasana. Okay, you can always sit on a cushion if you feel that you're rolling down. You can sit on a cushion. That really helps to straighten your spine. You lift the arms up. And you exhale down. Now in this, you can keep the knees bent if your hamstrings are really tight and move the forehead to the knee. If you can do it with straight legs, do the same thing with straight legs for beginners, bent legs. Five breaths to five minutes. This pose. And if you can't, and if you can't do any of these four asanas, then you do the pranayama, which is anyway so important. We showed, I showed you so many pranayama and the neck rolls. So from your chin, you roll the neck. Very, very good for thyroid. And the other way. Do five to ten times. One way. Five to ten times. The other way. 
and boom, boom shakalaka. We are done. We have learned five asanas. We have learned five pranayama, four or five pranayama. Just using this will really, really help you in this journey. And I hope it helps you and I hope we can practice this more often. Namaste everybody. If there are any questions, I will come there now. Yes, Sunara. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you so much for a very easy uh, demonstration of the asanas. I have a couple of open questions from people. So, uh, Shik Sood asked, uh, what is the thought behind using a towel while doing Sarvang Asana? How does it help? I explained that, no, like I don't want your neck to be pushing into the um, floor like this. You're going to have neck pain. You need your C7 to be lifted up a little bit. Your whole neck cannot be pressed in like that. That's why. You will have a lot of issues if that happens. You'll start getting neck pain. You start getting shoulder pain. You should use that. Like people don't explain this, but it is very, very important. Like maybe not even one blanket. You might need two or three blankets. But really this is something also when you have somebody like a teacher actually teaching you. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So uh, Natasha asked, can you please explain how to do Sarvangasana for a beginner who's not probably able to lift your legs up? No, you should not do it. If you cannot lift, you really need to go to a teacher because it will hurt you. It will hurt you. It's a big process. That's why I explained that in the beginning. You can do all the pranayama, do the neck rolls. Don't do something that you've not done before. You will be sitting in a doctor's office. So don't. Yoga asana is really about alignment. It's really about being careful. That's why I mentioned again, uh, Nidhi, that don't do it if you can't do it. Because unless you have a teacher or you're doing a private class with a teacher, you shouldn't do it. If your body can't lift up, then even however much I explain it, it's not going to work. You know, until I'm there physically or until I'm teaching you on a very personal level. Hello? Nidhi? Hello? Yes, we I Okay, you can hear me, but I can't hear Nidhi. So I need to wait for questions, but I can't hear anyone. Yeah, exactly, Ravjot. Nidhi is not audible. Sorry, I had some uh, technical issues. I'm really sorry I disappeared like that. No, no, no problem. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so there were, uh, so is there any alternative asana for shoulder stand and halasana for elders? It's for my mom who's almost 60 and has a knees problem. Yes, so all the pranayama and the neck rolls. Okay, okay. If you have a neck issue like cracking, is it okay to do? I'm assuming no. Uh, cracking or neck issue? Neck issues like cracking. Then don't do it. Because it's going to hurt you. Okay. How long should one practice yoga daily? From half an hour to two hours. Okay. And uh, there's somebody and a couple of them who want to again get the names of the breathing exercises we did in the beginning and what is their relevance? But I explained the relevance, Nidhi. Yes, I think so. We did. They need uh, to just see the video again. Yeah, probably. The something. relevance. Yes, I will be sharing this recording for all the registered users. So you can again watch it thrice. Yeah, again watch it. Five times and you'll get it. So we yeah. did Astika, we did Ujjayi, we did Pranayama, we did Kapal Bhati. All of these are really, really amazing for your everyday exercise and you can watch it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, 
I think we we don't have any more questions as of now. And uh, what is the best time to do yoga for PCOD? Come on, I think it can be any time. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, morning, evening, whenever you feel. But I think it's uh, something that you want to comment on empty stomach. Do people want to, you know, it's better to do empty stomach? No, there are different asanas. Yeah, you can do a butterfly pose or lie down in Sukta Bada Panasana. Uh, you're not doing forward and all that, then you don't need such an empty stomach, but mostly practice yoga with an empty stomach. Right. Okay. I think that uh, covers all our questions at this point. Uh, Sanena, okay. I'm really, really honored to have you and it was a pleasure having you and teachers. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. It was a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Nidhi. You too. Thank you everyone for watching. It was amazing. And please see the video again. You'll understand everything. Ciao. So guys, uh, after this video, we are uh, going to start with Mindhouse, who's going to teach us cyclic meditation. So just stay tuned. We'll have Isha Lal joining in uh, 15 15 minutes, so you can take a break, all of you, and come back in another 10 minutes. So there are people who are asking me, can we leave and join again? Uh, you can keep your window open and probably be on mute and come back uh, for the next session. You do not necessarily uh, have to leave or end the meeting.
Hi, Nidhi. Hi, Isha. Can you hear me right? Hello? Isha, I think you are on mute. Uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. I'm and turning I... my video also. And uh, is that okay? Yes. I am so going to make sure you. that everybody is able to see me completely while I'm in this session. <clears throat> so I think, yeah, this should be fine. Perfect. I think people are uh, still on. Uh, we're just taking a break. You can take five, ten minutes just to uh, yeah. set yourself and we can come back again. Yeah, I just also want to uh, make sure that you are able to hear me with the Bluetooth. So I'm just trying to connect my data Bluetooth. Okay, yeah, okay, I can hi. hear you right now. Yes, I can hear yes. you. I can see you. Everything's perfect. All right, phenomenal. That's good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, see you in a bit. Yeah. Bye. Bye.
Nidhi, all good? Yes, Isha, all good. I can okay. see you. Yes. Yeah, all right, great. So just give me a go ahead whenever. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Uh, will the talk also have lifestyle diet talk or just yoga? So this is from Sim. So Sim, I think this uh, question uh, we will be able to answer in, in tomorrow's session. So we have a session uh, with Shivananda where we will be also talking about lifestyle. So this is something that you can join. Uh, Rashi says, Isha's voice is not audible to please. Also, Sunaina's voice was breaking and inaudible. Uh, Isha, do you want to sit on the mat and quickly check if you are okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll quickly cross check. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, everything looks fine. Yeah, Rashi, can you hear? Can you hear her fine now? People on the uh, participants, guys, can you just give me a quick thumbs up if you can hear right? Okay. Yes. You're Hi guys. I, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that I'm audible, and I really want to give you an enhanced experience. So, anytime you feel my voice is not audible, just yeah, raise your hand or tell Nidhi. Okay, so we still ha have three minutes before we go live with the second session. But uh, since we've already joined and we have people on board, do you want to give uh, a quick review of what you're going to teach? What does it really do in a hormonal imbalance situation so that people can sort of get an understanding? Definitely. Uh, so Nidhi and all the participants, we all know that PCOS, yes, is because of uh, a bit of hormonal imbalance. And the lifestyle that we have today, these days, is so rush rushed. We never really focus on our internal atmosphere. So the cyclic meditation, primarily, it's an ancient practice. And sages have been pra practicing it for years. It has been also mentioned in Mandukya Upanishad. So this technique, basically, it releases all the accumulated stress within the body from the cellular level. And it starts to uh, rebuild or revive the lost functions within the cells, within the tissues, within the muscles, within the organs as well. So all in all, it repairs your entire system as if it was completely new. But I would recommend that people should diligently do this practice. So cyclic meditation, unlike other meditations, is not a meditation where we'll be sitting down entirely. There will be a little bit of movement and uh, we will be practicing three simple yoga asanas. There will be chanting, akara, ukara, makara, like a, ah, u sound. And these vibrations, they resonate the vibrations of a healthier cells, uh, of a healthier cell. So that's why we emphasize on the chanting as well. And also towards the end, there will be a deep relaxation technique. And that will, from the beginning till the end, it, you will feel like a completely new person. So that's why I love this meditation practice. It's a mix of breathing. It's a mix of self-awareness. It's a mix of uh, three essential yoga asanas, which are primarily catering on your lower body. So this is a, a brief about cyclic meditation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isha. I think we're ready to start. And for participants, if you have any questions during the session, again, as we did for the previous session, I'll park those questions till the end and I'll ask on behalf of you to Isha. So best yeah. of luck and have fun. Thank you. It is going to be a half an hour session. All right, let's begin. Welcome everyone. I'm Isha Lal and uh, from Mindhouse and we are doing this cyclic meditation practice for all you lovely people out there especially because of the PCOS condition, more than 70% of women are facing it. And the meditation practice, as I just gave a brief, brings in equanimity within the body and the mind. And that is so crucial for everything within to function normally. So for this practice, if you want to grab a cushion handy, please grab that. Make sure you are either sitting or you have a space to lie down because it's a practice will be standing sitting. And if you all are ready, let's begin the practice by taking a minute to focus on ourselves, sit cross-legged, 
palms facing up. Roll the shoulders back, relax. Stay with the eyes closed. And observe how the breath is flowing within the body. Bring the awareness towards your inflow and outflow of the breath. Take a deep breath in and allow this breath to travel through the nose, through the throat, into the chest, the lungs, going all the way down in your internal organs. And as you exhale, relax, allow the breath to travel up out towards the rock. And observe how it comes out as you exhale. Take a deep breath in once again. Keep breathing at this pace. And now, begin to lie down on the mat. I'll be sitting and guiding you. But make sure you are lying down. And as you lie down, relax the entire body. Relax completely. <clears throat> uh, Isha, sorry to budge you, but I think people are not able to hear. Uh, just one second. Hello, am I audible now? It's better now. Guys, can you please okay. confirm quickly? I think some. Yeah, all right. So let me sit here first and then as the practice moves yeah. a little uh, yeah, in depth, I'll move back. So as you're breathing in and out, make sure you're sitting comfortably. Take a deep breath in. And a soft, long exhale out. Another deep breath going all the way down till your internal organs. And your exhale, letting all the toxins out from the body. So maintaining the same pace of the breath, I would request all of you to lie down on the mat. We are going to do an instant relaxation technique. So I'll be guiding you while you are lying down. You don't need to observe me while you are lying down. Relax yourself completely. Relax the legs. Make sure there's a little distance between your feet, between your legs. Arms resting by the side. And in this technique, we are going to tense the entire body, tense the muscles completely, and then we'll relax. So take a moment to settle down, allowing the gravity to take control, allowing the breath to settle and feel the body losing control on itself. Relax all the muscles. And now begin to tense the entire body, starting from the tip of the toes. Point your toes away from you, point them away. Tense the shins and the calves. Tense your knees, your thighs, pull the kneecaps up. And as you inhale, puff the chest. And as you exhale, squeeze the stomach in, tightening the core, engage your arms, make a fist, tighten the entire arm, stay with your eyes closed. Tighten the neck, tighten the face, make an angry face. Squeezing all the face muscles, squeezing the eyes, squeezing the cheeks, squeezing the lips, the muscles around the lips as if you are extremely angry on somebody and all the facial muscles are being involved. So tensing the crown of the head till the tip of the toes, the entire body tensing, tensing all the muscles, feel every single muscle in your body by tensing every part and let go, exhale, relax. Relax yourself completely. Do not hold any tension now. Surrender, drop. Take a pause here, 
reflect on the breath once again. Allow this breath to smoothly travel in every single part. Now we will begin with standing exercises. So toss on to your right by folding the left knee first. Do not be in a rush and allow yourself to stand up very gently, very softly onto the mat. And we will begin with standing practice. <clears throat> so in this practice, as you stand, you can gently watch me first and then close your eyes. It's a very awareness driven practice. We have the tip of the toes, we have the heels of our feet. In this practice, we'll shift the weight forward and backward and laterally as well. But we'll do this practice with the eyes closed. Relax the arms first, relax the entire body and close your eyes. Now observe the entire weight equally on the soles of your feet, equally balanced on both the sides. We will chant Merkara first, the sound which sounds like mm. Let's do it together. Inhale. On your exhale. Mm. Feel the resonance of this mer sound in your head, in your neck. And now, as I said, we'll shift the entire body weight onto the tip of the toes without opening the eyes as if we are about to fall forward, but there is somebody who is holding us back. Observe the pointed awareness and you come back in the center. Now pull the kneecaps up and shift the entire weight onto the heels without lifting the toes as if somebody is pushing you away but again the force from behind holding you and you come back straight in the center now shift your weight entirely on to the right edge of the right foot you're leaning like leaning tower of pisa on to the right and come back in the center gently and you shift on to the left now Feel the entire weight shifting on to the left edge of the left foot and softly come back in the center. And as you come back in the center, the body aligns itself. You will feel the center of gravity, which might be disturbed before, now is perfectly fine. Take a few deep breaths while you stand in full awareness. And from here, gently open your eyes once again. We are going to raise the right arm in a very smooth, gentle manner. As if we are going with the flow of the breath, like a river which flows very gently. And as you reach, 90 degree, you shift the focus onto the wrist and you flip the palm up and keep moving. Do not stop the flow. Keep moving up. Allow the arm, allow the blood to flow with the movement of the arm. And as the right arm reaches the ear, stretch the arm up. Feel a beautiful stretch on your entire right side and you tilt on to the left. Take the support of the left palm, use it as a guide, gliding on to the left thigh. And now close your eyes. Gently come back in the center. Stretching the arm again up towards the ceiling. And in the same fashion, we bring the arm down. As you bring the arm down, feel the tension in your deltoid, in your shoulder joint. And as you keep flowing, you feel the attention shifting 
from the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist and at 90 degree you flip the palm towards the earth and keep bringing the arm gently down and relax the arm beside you take a moment and feel how the rush of blood is happening in your palms in your fingers in your fingertips right arm feels completely energized and now if you are aware of the movement we'll do the same with the left without opening the eyes but if you feel like you can open and let's begin to raise the left arm up keep inhaling keep exhaling do not hold the breath at any point keep moving the arm keep going feel the arms feel the muscles of the left arm getting activated and as you reach 90 flip the palm up towards the sky towards the ceiling keep taking the arm further up very gently very softly bring it closer to the left ear feel the surface of the left bicep closer to the left ear stretch the arm all the way up stretching the body completely on the left side and then you tilt on to the right using the right palm as your guide gliding on to the right thigh if you're comfortable stay with the eyes closed feel the sensations within and gently come back in the center once again stretching the left arm once again a rush of blood into the heart and you begin to bring the arm very softly down observing the tension in the deltoid observing the shift of energy from the deltoid to the left elbow and as you bring your arm at 90 you flip the palm and very softly without stopping you bring the left arm closer to the left neck relax take a moment here once again are you able to feel the sensation in the left palm left fingers as well notice notice how the entire nervous system with simple stretching is getting activated and now we will sit and lie down so again sitting very gently use both the palms to glide on the thighs and glide on your shins and your calves as you sit and after sitting stretch your legs and then on to the mat you lie down stay with the eyes closed i'll be guiding you once again as you surrender yourself on to the mother earth on to the mat allow the gravity to take control and whatever your experience is do not judge yourself allow yourself to be completely in it this is an observed breathing deep belly breathing practice without any judgments simply observe the breath as you inhale and as you exhale whatever the pace of the breath let it be do not manipulate it soft and gentle breath in and allow it to come out and as it comes out imagine 
the unwanted within the body is also coming out with the breath. Any discomfort, any pain, let it out. Now I would like all of you to observe the breath at a very minute level. As you inhale, imagine the breath going in through the nostrils. Visualize it going through the throat. And as it goes into the lungs, it expands the lungs, filling all the ear sacs. And as the ear sacs expand, your diaphragm pushes your stomach out and the stomach also becomes inflated. And as you exhale, visualize the breath ascending up. And as it ascends, it brings out the carbon dioxide, the toxins out from the body, from every single cell. And you relax with your exhale. Once again, let's keep this visualization within the mind and take long, deep breaths. Inhaling, allowing the breath to travel at your own pace. But observe this breath doing magic within. Filling up the lungs, expanding the air sacs, expanding the stomach, pushing the stomach muscles out. And as you exhale, let the stomach sink in. Let the breath come out. And with the exhalation, it brings in relaxation. Continue at your own pace for another minute. Keep focusing on the breath. Hold on to it like an anchor. Don't drift yourself away. Keep breathing. few more seconds. Maybe you can observe the temperature of the breath as well. As you inhale, feel how the breath is subtly cold. And as you exhale, observe there is a bit of warmth in the breath. Make yourself connected within. And now, very gently, once again, we'll come in a seated posture. So bend the left knee first, toss on to your right side and lift yourself up very softly using the left palm and extend your legs forward first. <clears throat> and from here you cross the legs and once again sit in a cross-legged position. And we'll begin with three basic asanas or yoga postures. The first asana is Vajrasana. So you will fold both the legs and come in a seated posture wherein your legs are folded, hips are onto the heels. If you feel that hips, there is a little discomfort, you can always use the cushion to place it underneath. All right, we will start with this and just simply observe the other two as well. From here, we will go down onto the mat, placing the forehead. Again, if there is any discomfort, you can pull the cushion in front and place your forehead there. From here, we'll move back and come in half camel pose. 
this little distance between the knees, supporting the lower back, tucking the tailbone in, rolling the shoulders back, and then we will go back. So these three simple asanas we will practice along with the chanting. So right now, come in Vajrasana or Thunderbolt pose. Make yourself comfortable, palms resting onto your thighs. And from here, take both the arms behind, grab the right wrist with the left, as if you are checking the pulse of the right arm. And close your eyes. Observe the pulse. Take a deep breath in. And with your exhale, you begin to fold forward. Try to bring the forehead closer to the mat. If it doesn't rest onto the mat, it's absolutely fine. Go as far as you can at your own comfort. Feel the rush of blood in your forehead, in the neck. For some, there might be a little change in the heartbeat as well. And here we will chant Mokara once again. Take a deep breath in. Very gently come up. And observe the sound of this Mokara vibrating in your forehead, in your face in your neck all the way down till your spine as well. Release the palms, relax the palms back onto your thighs. And from here, begin to rise onto the knees, a little distance between your knees, supporting yourself equally on both the left and the right. Place your palms, fingers in front, thumbs behind onto the waist. Tuck the tailbone in. Make sure when you go back, there is no pressure or compression in the lower back. Hence, tucking the tailbone in. So that it gives you an extra support here. All right. Roll the shoulders back. Open the chest. Going back again to a comfortable length. Allowing the upper body to stretch. And leaning gently back, allowing the chest to expand here. Without strain in the neck, we will chant Akara. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Slowly come back up. And come back in Vajrasana once again. An ah sound comes from the heart center, from the navel. So it relaxes the middle region completely. Now extend your legs forward and lie down for the final stage of cyclic meditation, that is deep relaxation practice. I'll be sitting and guiding you through this beautiful meditation. Make yourself comfortable, lie down. And once again, this time when you lie down, feel how the body is a little different from the instant relaxation that we did in the beginning. In this relaxation technique, we will focus on the lower body first then the middle body and eventually the upper body. So with your breath, move your attention towards the toes, towards the feet. And as you breathe in, the entire energy flows into the toes and your feet, relaxing them completely as you exhale. With your next inhale, Allow the breath, visualize it moving into your ankle joints, your shins and your calf muscles. And as you exhale, you allow these ankle joints 
You allow the shins and your calves to rest, to relax. Let the feet, let the legs fall on the either side. Feel the tiredness going away. With your next breath, you move your attention onto your knee joint, onto your thighs. Observe the area around your knees with your eyes closed. Observe the tendons, observe the muscles, observe the tissues. As you breathe, as you inhale, you take the replenishment required for these areas. And as you exhale, you relax. In the same way, bring your attention towards your thighs. Let your thighs breathe. And as you exhale, Feel the tiredness from the thighs oozing out and releasing it all onto the mat. Feel the relaxation getting deeper, breath by breath. Move your awareness onto your pelvic joint, onto your hip muscles. Bring the relaxation in the pelvic joint with the breath. Release the tightness from there. Allow the cells to replenish in that area. Feel the nourishment happening. And with your exhale, releasing the tiredness, releasing the stress all onto the mat, melt it. And now to enhance the relaxation in the lower body, we will chant Akara as you lie down. Deep inhale. Ah. of the ah sound from the base of the navel relaxes the entire lower body and the more we chant the better we feel let's move up into the middle body move your attention to the lower back your mid back your upper back feel the entire back rested on to the mat with full comfort Feel the weight of your shoulders onto the mat as well. And as you breathe, you allow the muscles of the back to breathe as well. And as you exhale, you release the tiredness of the back onto the mat. Allow the spine to align itself with the breath. And moving up into the arms. Feel the arms resting by your side. With the breath, you allow the oxygen to move freely into these arms. Observe the breath as it travels from the upper arm to the elbows, to the forearms, to the wrist, arms, your fingers and your fingertips. Relax completely. 
Feel the weight of the arms getting heavy. And now you gently move the attention towards the chest, towards the heart center, towards the lungs. As you breathe in, inflate the entire upper body. And as you breathe out, relax. Any unwanted feeling, any tension in the heart, any thought you might be holding within, it's time to let it out. The more you relax yourself, the better you'll feel. And now move into the upper abdomen, your lower abdomen. Take the breath with full awareness into these areas. You'll feel the expansion of your lower and the upper abdomen. very gently allow the internal organs to breathe and with your exhale releasing the tightness releasing the knots if any and we will chant ukara now deep inhale Relaxing the middle body as the sound originates from the heart center. Now move the awareness into the neck, into the face. And as you relax the neck, the breath begins to move into the face very gently. It travels into the mind. Zipping around your thoughts and allow your thoughts to pause for a while. Do not engage with your thoughts, do not have any conversation with them. Simply observe, acknowledge, and relax. Take a moment to relax the upper body. And let's chant Mahakara once again. Deep breath in. Mm. Let the vibration travel deeper. Starting from the crown of your head all the way down till the tip of your toes. And by focusing on every single part and chanting Aoma, we have released the accumulated stress from within. We are working on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest, which is repair and rejuvenate. Now, it's time to come out of this gentle meditation body scan practice. So interlace your fingers and stretch them over yourself. Extend the legs, give yourself a nice stretch from the tip of the toes all the way up and relax the arms by the side. Feel the breath moving smoothly than before within.
Now, once again, bend your left knee and toss onto the right side as you lift yourself up. And as you lift yourself up, stay with the eyes closed. Do not be in a rush to open your eyes. Allow this feeling to sink in. Keep observing your breath. Stay connected with it. Feel the magic of it. Bring both the palms right at the heart center. Express the gratitude towards your mind, towards your body, towards your breath for letting you in the practice. May this practice bring you inner peace, heal you and strengthen you from within. Gently rub the palms. Generate some warmth and place the right palm at the heart, left palm at the stomach. And gently open your eyes. Thanks, Isha. That was a very, very lovely session. Very, very calming. Uh, I do have a lot of questions and I think we we still have about eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so first question that yeah. I want to ask, uh, people who have never uh, experienced meditation before, getting into the state of yeah. mind of meditation can be yeah. uh, a bit difficult, right? Uh, especially learning from my experiences. I feel that people who yeah. have never meditated, it'll be a, quite a distracting experience uh, to get into that state of meditation. So yeah. do you want to share some tips? Like how do you get into that state of meditation first so that you can, you know, concentrate that stillness you can enjoy? Yeah, so it's a beautiful question, Nidhi. Thank you so much. So I, uh, what my personal experience also has been, see, mind is always chattering. So if you try to push it and tell it to be quiet, it is not going to work. So never uh, indulge yourself in very long meditation practices. Start with small, probably, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes sitting with yourself for a few days. And then eventually building those 10, 15 minutes to 20 minutes and 25 minutes. And whenever the mind wanders, I always tell, come back to the breath. Observe if you keep holding on to the breath as the anchor, because breath will never let you go away from the current state, from the current moment. And whatever the thoughts, whatever the feelings, it's a good idea to observe them and let them pass. That is how you begin to start meditation. And once it becomes a habit, then you would not even feel what happened. Whether that thought came and went by, you will not realize. So uh, take time out 10 minutes in the morning, afternoon, evening. Spread it like that so that eventually you can build it longer. Sim Sandhu asks, how does tensing a uh, full body help? So you ex uh, explained in the beginning to squeeze your yeah. muscles. It yeah, all the muscles, yes. So uh, uh, what happens is unintentionally we hold a lot of stress within the body. And that's why sometimes we see we are sitting like this. Shoulders are automatically crunching up. Back is uh, hunched as well. And, uh, you know, we become unaware of the internal stress that happens because of the thoughts and because it's a vicious cycle. The mental thoughts or, you know, the mind will give a lot of stress to the body and eventually the body uh, causes a mental stress. So as per Upanishads, as per cyclic meditation, it's a scientifically backed practice. If you stress the entire body, what you're doing is you're trying to distribute the stress in all the parts of the muscles equally and you are tensing the muscles all of it all the body and you are trying to release the accumulated stress and allowing it to come on the surface and then eventually when you relax you feel a lot better so that is why it gives you instant relaxation and hence the name in IRT instant relaxation technique so this practice you can do it before sleeping as well 
so the stress of the bo the bodily stress especially before sleeping all is washed away with instant relaxation i was about to get that exactly the same topic that can we do it before sleep because sleep issues are really common in pcod uh, yeah. especially like again speaking from experiences talking to women my experience hmm. uh, getting a one straight 8 hour of sleep was a dream hmm. at one point of time and i think yeah. that relaxation that you do really helps uh, yeah. what are the other times that women can practice this looking at this recording do you think around evening time or especially like oh, considering the food meal options also that we have where do you think yeah. it's rightly placed in our uh, should so this practice can be done uh, around this time which is a wonderful time when you have not eaten and uh, so it works beautiful especially on your internal organs because of the chanting and because when we go in the forward fold child's pose so all of this activates the lower body uh, so you can do this practice that time also in the evening time maybe just before your tea or even half an hour after your tea or evening snack you have had and before uh, sleeping as well if there is enough gap between the dinner and your sleep maybe 90 minutes to 2 hours since this practice does not involve uh, you know too much of an intense uh, exercise this can be done easily before sleeping and you will feel that it is doing magic to the mind and the body trust me the sleep would be wonderful and and i feel that this can be something which can be paired up as a uh, you know follow up exercise or a practice after a uh, say a high intensity workout some women like to do a high intensity workout and i feel that the yeah. modern exercises fail to bring relaxation in we sort of you know very busy to do all the you know push ups mm. and all of that but the relaxation part which you beautifully explained can i think will be a follow up great follow up procedure if people do not you know uh, want like a long meditative process at least yeah. like doing what you even explained after your high intensity workouts will be great, great because yeah. i got a lot of questions from uh, yes. people on my dm channel that will mm. be how do we make yoga Uh, fun to do. How can I make it, you know, creative? So obviously, meditation is not where it, ex, you know, demands like a dancing like uh, sequences. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Ridhi, I would say, uh, not necessarily you have to do, uh, you know, a practice yoga practice which is boring. You can make yoga flow, which is moving from one pose to the other very gently, not pushing yourself way beyond the limits. but keeping it like a gentle flow moving from one uh, form to the other to the other and putting a nice music to your yoga practice i would say you don't have to be boring these days we have such amazing playlist and even with this practice i would say if you want to play a very soothing music in the background uh, that would be a great add on and a sleep inducer as well and sometimes what happens it's a personal experience as well i'm 34 and i've been you know doing i was doing a lot of things running gym yoga but all in all i realized that muscles at the end of the day do get tired and if we are not breathing properly the right amount of oxygen is not being delivered to these parts for the recovery and hence th these relaxation practices become crucial your growth hormones which are built only when you sleep so they also have a major role to play in your entire well being so i feel dedicating 15 minutes or 20 minutes of this practice you know the last bit specially you can do that for instant relaxation technique and do it every yeah. day and see the magic i think so of building I think building on to the practice covid people are sort of overworking due to the work from home work. situation and this can yeah. be a great break of breathing so thank you so much isha it was a lovely session do you want to quickly also uh, speak about what mind house does and how people can yeah. help yes. with that i i actually was coming on to that so mind house primarily is a gym for the mind uh, and the entire goal of mind house is to focus on how to you know we have different goal based practices in the app app that we have 
and we have online sessions like i just did we have online sessions we have live sessions based on breath work based on meditation based on visualization so uh, you can decide what you want you can pick your goal if your goal is to de stress if your goal is a better sleep so it will recommend you practices according to that because there's plethora of content and uh, again the content is great you can figure it out yourself or you can put your goal and there are 10 10 minutes bite sized sessions also which are great meditation practices and uh, as nidhi is saying you need to take a break in your entire day turn your laptop away and see what's there on the app and uh, tune in yeah so i think people who who there are a lot of people who ask me where they can get like background music or meditation yeah. where you can find it i think there are a lot of other apps as well i i did not know about mindhouse earlier until you spoken about the app so there is a app that you can download guys and figure yeah. it out like this session and catch hold of isha there as well yeah otherwise <laughs> ask nidhi <laughs> she'll put me in touch with you guys great nidhi thank you so much thank you everyone again if you have more questions uh, shoot them to nidhi and uh, i'll make sure i have the answers for you thanks a yeah. lot Thank you thanks Isha thank have you thanks bye have a great evening everyone yeah. So guys the next session that we have lined up is on yin yoga will be led by Charu and we'll be uh, we are scheduled to start at 5:30 which is now but we'll take another 2 3 minute break people who uh, want to just uh, take a bathroom break or just uh, stretch their muscles in the meanwhile i'll invite charu to you know just do a bit of test check on the you know audio and video so charu if you're there uh, i'll ask you to unmute hi nidhi can you hear me hi charu yes how good evening i'm good how are you i'm absolutely fine very so, done so i am going to put to you see me Yes, the camera is a bit blurry. Now it's fine. Yeah. Is it fine now? Yeah. Okay. One second. Just give me a moment. All right. So just set the setup. Okay. Let me know if that's fine. Guys, whoever was on the participant list right now and active, can you tell us if you can hear and see fine? I can see her fine and hear fine. Hi, hi everyone. Is my voice quality good enough? Yeah, so people can see you and hear you, oh, and right. uh, the voice quality can be a bit better. Some people say that they are not able to hear. So I plugged in my earphone. They have a very good quality as such. Okay. Yeah. So can you hear me properly? I can hear you. Uh, All right. It's not the best. Uh, I mean, it can the voice can be a bit more clear though. But you can take some time. There's a bit of echo. One second. Now it's better. Now. now it's better it's, it's much better, better. okay yeah. if you want i can try to increase it a little bit more go ahead now yes i think it's is perfect. that good enough oh, yes. okay that's nice is absolutely fine quickly just want to tell people the props they need so that they can grab hold of them yes you want to say or should i say that go ahead Okay guys welcoming all of you this evening so before we start i just like to tell you the props that we are going to use in the yin yoga practice which are two blocks so if you don't have blocks you can also use hard covered books as a substitute for the blocks then we have two pillows or three pillows which are the large ones that you use while you sleep also you can add two to three cushions the small cushions and keep them by your side and two soft blankets something like a soft thin blanket like this that's about it great 
Uh, Charu, yeah. do you want to give a minute or so because we just grabbed up yes. the session. Then, Probably yeah. get yeah. drop ready. And in the meanwhile, do you want to tell something about yourself? What, you know, where have you learned your yoga from? How long have you been doing yes. yoga? So I have been doing yoga practically since my childhood. When I was in school, I started very, very early. And my teachers were direct disciples of BKS Iyengar, Guruji BKS Iyengar. So I had a very nice, wonderful practice and almost one of the best teachers, very, very experienced. But quite after school, I did not resume my practice until I came back to it four years ago. So again, I was suffering from a lot of problems, physical health challenges at a very young age when I suffered a lot of gut, gut troubles. And practically everywhere that I went, Doctors used to diagnose, they were not able to diagnose. I did all the tests, nothing used to come in my tests, and yet I was suffering and deteriorating every single day. So until I discovered yoga, meditation, and other holistic approaches that really got me onto this path back again. And I understood that it's not your physical trouble. The physical trouble is rooted to your mental health, to your emotional state. And when, when you suffer from these states and you don't release, you don't release mentally, you don't release your emotional troubles, you keep suppressing them inside, they kind of manifest in your body. And as being conditioned in the society, when you have a trouble, you are told to go to a doctor and pop a pill. Right. So I had so I had a heavy list of antibiotics at the age of 19 or 20, which practically ruined my entire system. My gut flora was gone. I, I got hormonal imbalances. My endocrine health was gone. And it was really, really difficult for me to get back onto track. I used to leave my studies. I could do nothing. So until I, I joined some organization, which was an NGO where I worked for about 12 years, there I felt a little bit better and a kind of next step to healing. And then again, there I discovered it was so stressful, the work situation out there that I wanted to leave after those few years. And again, there was too much stress in my body. And now how do I release that stress? So the only thing my heart told me to do that used to keep ringing in my whole being was yoga. So something was calling me back to this again. And also during the period that I was there, it was a very spiritual environment where I was there for 12 years. So I learned a lot on the spiritual front. So that really like broadened my spectrum in a way. So uh, we need to understand the underlying causes of diseases, like you said, PCOS. It, the, if you see in the internet, it says the cause is not yet known. Yeah. And hence, hence, even the cure is not known. So today yeah. I'm going to tell you an underlying cause of all these diseases. And specifically for women, what could, according to my experience that I have gone through with my body, with my mental state, with my emotional state, could be one of the reasons. And now we have yoga and meditation as the number one stress rated solution with backed, scientifically backed researches, proven breakthroughs. And it is really, really profound in the sense you can really transform your entire being. It's so powerful. And I'm, I'm like a living example of that. <laughs> I think a lot of people, what you said very beautifully of, you know, how the thoughts sort of manifest into a disease or a hormonal imbalance. That's yes. really rightly put. And I feel a lot of people would resonate uh, when you say that. Because once you start doing your practices, it's magical how your body heals. And I truly believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it sort of, uh, you know, aggravates that uh, healing power. It it makes it a priority once you start relaxing and do, doing yoga. And, and we are very grateful that we have so many practices now and we have so much of knowledge around and we have, you know, yes. there are apps, there are people, there are so many instructors uh, like you. So I think um, very, very rightfully said, Charu, and uh, 
very excited to learn yin yoga from you i am excited i'm excited to to share whatever i have experienced that's like that's the only thing i'm excited about so it's so it's not about only teaching it's about learning it's about imbibing that practice within yourself until and unless you don't imbibe it into your being it does not make a difference it does not make a transformation so you, so you really have to live live what you're doing you have to live yoga the union it, it says yoga means the union union means reestablishing reestablishing a connection between your mind and your body via certain discipline so right so in right. this kind of modern lifestyle we have lost that connection totally with ourselves and we don't realize it is all within ourselves and we have the power to really heal ourselves to a very large level and we True. don't need to create a dependency on anything yes for certain things you do, do need a dependency on the modern scientific allopathic or those kind of medicines antibiotics but they come with a lot of damage to your system with the side effects which i have also really suffered a lot there was a time when i picked up my medicines and threw them literally in the bin that that's it now i can't take it any longer so until i realized there were deep rooted fears in my body which i held which i suppressed and i needed to overcome and it took me practically 15 years to realize that because everyone would tell me go to a doctor go to a doctor and it did nothing practically nothing great so we are so grateful to you know hear and learn from you and people who are on board uh, i think you will be an inspiration probably some people thank you to the same stories so i'm giving you the video now i am i'm going to stop my video and uh, enjoy the session guys and let me know uh, if you have any questions we can take it at the end of the session yep jaru so i know one uh, one more thing i would request to you after that if uh, people can put themselves on mute because that will greatly improve the voice quality so everybody is on mute the participants All are right. mute All yeah right. just be a okay. bit louder when you speak so maybe that that helps all right okay so i'm all, i don't know if i'm loud enough <laughs> it's fine it's fine you okay all right so please give me a heads up nidhi when to start you can start now charu ready to go all right ready to go I'll just grab a little bit of water please before I start. So good evening everyone. Welcoming all of you to this session on the occasion of the celebration of International Yoga Day with PCOS Club India. My name is Charu and I'm going to be leading this session today which is Yin Yoga. It is a very very subtle a gentle and a creative conscious movement that really relaxes your entire being so first of all i would like to thank nidhi who has really given a platform and launched this cause for the awareness of women suffering from pcos and how to find a cure or manage and prevent this condition naturally so nidhi thanking you very much for this opportunity and before we start the underlying condition of pcos i'd li like to talk a little about it so it's a condition which a lot of women suffer in the country everywhere in the world so with a uh, with a lot of imbalances caused due to hormonal imbalance endocrine imbalance mood swings it upsets your entire chemistry leading to menstrual imbalances until now it is not known why we suffer from this problem so again before we start let's take a key to the underlying causes of all the root diseases the world health organization has stated that the underlying cause of all the diseases is stress and stress is the epidemic of the 21st century so you can see what stress does to our bodies so a lot of the diseases that we have now are all due to the lifestyle that we're leading and are stress induced because 
the modern lifestyle is so so busy that we really do not take the time for ourselves to even relax so the first key factor being stress stress really imbalances your entire being your mental health your physical health your emotional health kind of makes you handicapped with a large number of diseases that crop into the body if you are not able to process those mental thoughts your emotional states of being key number 2 if you could think what could be the next key number 2 sedentary lifestyle now movement has become an endangered part of our lifestyle today so we really do not move our bodies so the human body is meant to move it is kind of machinery and if you do not move your body what will happen to a machine if you do not move a machine it is going to rust period so movement is a very very important part of your being and you really really need to move our bodies and the kind of lifestyles that we lead today is very very sedentary and we do not move as a result you see the drastic ill effects in the body in the form of various mental emotional and physical ailments point number 3 poor eating habits so i've kept my notes because i don't want to miss out anything poor eating habits so when you are under stress it induces stress eating the kind of lifestyle that you have the kind of stress that you are facing we call something like stress eating it signals the brain to produce certain chemicals where you make the wrong choices of foods be it sugar be it junk food be it processed foods adding to the trouble adding to the disease in your body so we need to adopt a practice and become aware of the kind of food choices that we make last factor poor sleep so again caused by stress if you're feeling a lot of stress and you're stressed all the time you're going to get a poor sleep so even if you're sleeping your brain is not at rest the activity is still going on in the brain and these days practically everyone faces this problem even if you're sleeping for a number of set hours 7 to 8 hours when you wake up in the morning you're not energized you're tired with fatigue in your body which means your brain is not at rest so these are the key factors that impact your well-being overall moving on to the next to be understanding where is the stress rooted so stress is fundamentally rooted at the core of your nervous system now understanding your nervous system we have two types of nervous system so i'm coming to this because this is going to assist you and make you understand what we are actually trying to do and how do i find a solution to the main fundamental cause for everything i'm facing which is stress so then we have two kinds of nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system now the sympathetic nervous system is the fight and flight mode what we stay in every day doing our tasks of the day now the sympathetic nervous system is when the when we perceive a threat for example you have a tiger or a lion running after you it will instantly produce chemicals in your brain give a stimuli a signal to the brain to run because you perceive a threat and you run away into the fight and flight mode whereas the parasympathetic nervous system is the rest digest and the relaxation response and it causes the body to rest and relax now the body is supposed to stay in the relaxation response for about 8 to 90% all the time and in the sympathetic response the fleeing fight or flight which is 1 to 3% now what happens in the modern lifestyle we are staying in the fight and flight mode 80 to 90% and in the relaxation mode only 3 to 5%. It's totally turned the other way around. So you can see how this is going to impact your body. Solution. What is the key to relax? So now the solution is to find how to maintain the relaxation response in the body. So a lot of problems are associated all the diseases are because we are always staying in the fight and flight mode and especially for women women have a number of responsibilities in the head number one multitasking 
So what happens when you're multitasking, you're constantly engaged with the brain activity. My children, my husband, making lunch, breakfast for everyone, getting up in the morning, and then leaving my children to school, getting my children back from school, making the food, responsibilities of the family, the in-laws, relationships, that is so, so much burden on women. So once you're thinking from one thing to the other, your brain does not get a rest. And what happens when the brain does not get the rest? Which means you are in the fight and flight mode all the time. Next key topic, that you are not even aware how much stress you are holding within your body. You're emotionally upset, you're suppressing your emotions, you cannot even talk to anyone. As a woman, you keep suppressing, keep suppressing. Now, when you are stressed, your body produces stress hormones, most importantly, cortisol. If you do not relax the body, it will keep increasing, leading to a large number of issues in the body, hormonal imbalance, reproductive imbalance, glandular activity will be imbalanced, menstrual dysfunction in the body, and a lot of number of other problems. So I attribute this aspect of the fight and flight mode specifically to women for these underlying causes, as you said, and PCOD is one of them. So you understand the science behind it because it's very, very important to become aware why women face a lot of these problems, especially hormonal imbalances, and multitasking is one of those reasons. So all you lovely women, you need to relax. You need to self-care. You need to understand how important it is to take care of your own self to your mental body, your emotional patterns, your physical body, exercising. Please get in touch with your old self and stop thinking of your body as something to fix. Start appreciating yourself just the way you are. And that is the key to take you into the relaxation response. Now coming to the practice that we're going to do, which is yin yoga. Now why, why yin yoga? Now it is absolutely taken from the classical traditional style of hatha yoga, but let's understand the science behind it. So it is a very gentle and subtle practice, which allows the body to open up, really helps you slow down with the busy pace of life, not only for women, but for everyone else, be it men, be it women, be it children, and allows you to slow down and really stretch, expose, open up the deep connective tissues of the body. Now, what, what is the relation with yin yoga? Let's understand again the science behind it. Again, there is, it encompasses a few principles. The first principle is using of the props, right? So we use the props to help the body to relax. The first principle of Sage Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, Thiram Sukham Asanam. Now, yoga is a conscious movement method, and the aim of yoga is to achieve oneness, to advance into the stages of meditation. Now, if the body is not at comfort, if I'm not able to sit, what is the point? How will I be able to relax my mind? So we use the props in this practice to deeply relax the muscles, and so that we can encourage the body to move the awareness, move us awareness to the different aspects like the breath, the mindfulness, and we can only achieve that once the body is completely relaxed. Second principle of yin yoga comes to the breath component. Now in this practice, we encourage when we are holding the poses and we hold the poses for a few minutes. Unlike the other dynamic forms of yoga, we use the poses and hold them on for a period of three to five minutes, starting from three to, to three minutes. Now, what that does is, it is a simple principle of stretching. We are passively stretching the muscles, but that is not enough. So the muscles tend to accumulate a lot of tension. Whenever we are under stress emotionally, physically, and mentally, it gets deeply rooted in the physical body. As a result, you will encounter chronic fatigue in the body and you'll be actually depleted with a lot of energy and you will hold this tension with the body becoming stiff. So 
So what happens by stretching the body and holding the poses for a longer period of time, we are getting into the deep connective tissues of the body, which are called fascia. Now the fascia is lies beyond, beyond the muscles. It is kind of a protective sheath and it separates the muscles, the ligaments, the bones, every organ in the body. And it kinds of a protective layer. And again, the tension that we experience, the stress that we experience goes deep down into the fascia. And as a result, the fascia gets stuck to each other with the tension, whatever the stress that you're experiencing. So scientifically, it takes about 120 seconds to lengthen and keep the fascia, hold the poses, to be able to release that fascia that has become stuck to each other. And thereby, by holding the poses, we are releasing the tension from the muscular fascia, and then the body feels relaxed. We don't only release physical tension, but we also release emotional tension that we have held and suppressed within the body. So everything is interconnected. Then coming to the breath awareness. So breath is a very, very important part of the yogic discipline. If you can alter your breath patterns, you will have a profound impact in your entire being, which is mentally, again, physically, emotionally, and energetically. Because you are get, becoming aware of your breath and you are breathing deeply, you are inhaling more vital energy into your body, more oxygen, more blood flow, better health. Moving on to the next principle of yin yoga, which is mindfulness. Now, this is a practice that encourages bringing your attention to the present moment. When we are holding the postures, we slowly become aware of the different sensations that we're feeling in the body. We try to move the awareness to the stretch areas, to the pain areas, to the breath, to the thoughts, what, what you're experiencing, to your emotions, what are you feeling? And we just observe them as it is. So in this practice, again, when we practice mindfulness, we repeatedly bring our attention to the present moment. And how powerful it is when you bring your attention to the present, it helps you to release so much that you have held within yourself. Again, not only physically, the emotions you have suppressed, your insecurities, your fears, your deep-rooted fears that you even cannot tell anyone your image that you hold of yourself. You learn to accept yourself just the way you are and you learn to tell yourself that I'm enough and I'm beautiful just the way I am. Period. That is it. So this is the mindfulness component. And now, yin yoga, because it encompasses all these principles together, so it becomes such a powerful healing practice that really goes to the deep levels of your body to rehabilitate, to repair, to restore, and rejuvenate the body at a larger level. So a few things I would like, to uh, like you to know once we start is that please use the props according to your convenience. Find your comfort edge. Please, if you get any sharp pain, please stop at that point. Do not push your body beyond your limitations, right? That is the other principle of yin yoga. I recommend you keep your eyes closed during the practice. So it makes you relaxed and helps you to tune in to the other aspects of your body, right? So let's start. I hope you all are ready. I hope you have got all your props together. And we're going to start by settling down, getting a sense of stillness and calmness before we start to move our bodies. So the first pose that we are doing, I hope you all can see me. If there's a problem, you can always let me know. So we're starting with the child's pose, which is Bal Asana. A very, very relaxing and a nurturing pose. If you want to drift into some sense of calmness after a busy day, this is just the ideal posture for you. So we will start by first. You can watch me and you can start with me together. So we'll start by lowering the hips down onto the heels. If, if you think you're not able to reach your hips to your heels, your, your body is very stiff, you can always take a rolled blanket and keep it between your calves and your thighs.
for some support. It will also protect the knee joint as well. Now from here, keep two pillows in front of you vertically, right? Now take a deep breath in as you inhale, raise your arms up above the head, lengthen through your spine, and with exhalation, slowly move forward with your fingertips on the floor, extend your spine and relax your forehead onto the pillow. So I hope you have started taking a deep breath in, lengthen your spine with exhalation, slowly leaning forward with control, relax your head onto the bolster or the pillows below. Now keep your eyes closed and just relax into the moment. Allow yourself to just simply breathe, to surrender and to melt into the posture. Start to take deep breaths, inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. Just becoming conscious of your breath as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Just let the gravity support your body without you having to support yourself. Extremely restorative, relaxes the trigger and the key is to trigger the relaxation response in the body. And that is what we have to master. So breathing gently and breathing out. It's like you're hitting the reset button before you start. So relax, set everything aside for a few moments, no thoughts racing in your mind, settle into the space, allow yourself to just feel safe and secure in your surroundings. Just simply breathing in and simply breathing out. So I'm going to put a little bit music. If that bothers you, let me know. So we are going to hold the poses for about two to three minutes and just try to relax into the pose. And now gently take a deep breath in and as you inhale with control, press the fingertips onto the ground and gently raise yourself up, coming back to the neutral spine position. Slowly release, get the knees together and come back to sit in a comfortable seated posture, Sukhasana. So now the next posture which is called Sukta Baddha Kon Asana. So Sukta means reclined and Baddha Kon is the butterfly pose. So let's start getting into it. I'm going to tell you the benefits along with it. Start by extending your legs forward in front of you. Just relax for a few moments and start by bending the knees together. So first, just keep two pillows behind your back before you start. Maybe you can keep two or three depending upon whatever you need. So start by bending the knees together and get the soles of your feet together. Interlock the fingers beneath the soles and start to flap, which is a very popular technique that everyone knows, the butterfly pose. Just a little bit warm up for the body. So now, if you're having any problem out here, your knees are hanging, 
Just take two blocks and keep it under your thighs to support the knee joint from hanging. Right? And now consciously taking a deep breath in, hold the floor with your fingertips and gently bring yourself back to lie down on the pillows. Make sure the palms are out towards the side. Your eyes are gently closed and you just relax there into the posture. Now it's a very, very good way to open and irrigate the regions of your pelvis. Really release the tension from your adductor, which is your inner thigh muscles. And as you lie down, there is a chest opening that is happening, which is very, very good for sedentary lifestyle. It's a heart opener. It releases all the emotional tension that you have accumulated in your heart. Better breathing. It's really stretching the intercostal muscles of the body encouraging your lungs to open up more. So again, you're encouraging a deep flow into your pelvic region. So now as you relax, take a deep breath in and exhale completely. And as you stay there and as you breathe, allow yourself to just visualize that I'm inhaling, soothing energy into my body. And as you exhale, allow yourself to release all the tension, all your stress, whatever you're experiencing and feeling, and just simply let it out, let it go as you breathe. And again, Yin is a practice that allows you to relax and go deeper into the states of tranquility, into a state of deep rest. So observe your body and observe the stretches. Where are you feeling the stretch? You would feel a stretch in the inner thighs. You would feel a gentle stretch across the abdomen your chest, make sure there is no pain coming in your lower back, your knees, your neck. If you feel there's a pain in the neck, just gently roll a soft blanket and keep it on the underside of your neck. Simply like this. Breathing in deep and exhaling slow. And ask yourself, how does it even feel to breathe? Are you aware? And with each breath, just allow the breath to move into the regions of your pain, your stiffness. Just to visualize all the tension releasing with each exhalation that you make. Connecting with yourself. Inviting the body into the mind. And just remembering that yoga is not about twisting the body into different directions. It is all about relaxing, connecting to yourself. So staying with your breath, allow yourself to move to the spaces beyond the physical body. Breathing in and breathing out. With each breath, tell yourself, I am relaxed and I am safe. 
and with each exhalation allow yourself to surrender more and more time to gently return so take a deep breath in and exhale completely with the next breath press your fingertips on the floor gently with control slowly raise yourself up or turn towards the side first and lift yourself up coming back to the neutral spine position and extend your legs further in front of you to release all the tension from your knees just pat the legs on the floor extend your toes out pull them in maybe just rotate at the ankle joint and just relax for a few seconds coming to the next is the pigeon pose or the kapotasana again it's a very very good pose that encourages and opens up the hip flexor muscles again a vigorous way to release all the tension from the hip region now as women we tend to accumulate a lot of tension in and around the hip flexor muscles the inner thigh muscles so it is very very necessary to just open up and release the tension from there so you can take a look at me once place the pillows two pillows horizontally towards the side so we are first going to come in the table top position make sure your palms are gently placed under your shoulders and your knees are directly under your thigh uh, your hip from here we are going to come into the downward dog or adho mukha svanasana by lifting the hips up walking the feet back now from here we are going to raise the right leg up get the right leg forward and place it towards the outer edge of the mat now what's going to happen here is your hips are going to miss be misaligned so for those who think their hips are misaligned just take a folded blanket and keep it on the right hip right knee bent under the right hip so that kind of really balances out your hips so make sure to keep the blanket two pillows in front of you Now here you're going to press the fingertips onto the floor lift the upper body up roll the shoulders back and give yourself a gentle arch at the spine gently lift your chin up and just breathe here taking a deep breath in exhaling completely If you're finding this difficult you can also place your palms onto the two blocks that will assist the body to open up more and now slowly just lean forward extend your spine pull the pillows close to your knee and just relax your forehead or the side of the cheek onto the pillow and as you lay there just observe allow yourself to feel the stretches where are you feeling the stretch so you would be feeling a good stretch in the right hip muscles the right outer thigh and you will be feeling a good stretch of the extended leg hip muscle all the muscles surrounding the hips called the hip flexors now again it's opening up all the muscles are surrounding the hip region encouraging the pelvic floor muscles to open up and as you go forward into a compression the spine is extending giving a good stretch to the spine stimulating the abdominal organs 
as well as the reproductive organs inside. So allow yourself to breathe, focusing your attention to the surface changes that are happening. Again, a practice complementary to the busyness of life that just kind of tells you that there is no hurry, there is no rush. So breathing in and breathing out. Inhaling and exhaling. Allow yourself to breathe deeper and deeper. And now slowly, coming out of the pose, tuck the toe in and slowly drag yourself back. Pull the right knee and bring it back, coming back again into the tabletop position. Lift the knees again. And from here, lift the left leg up. Get the left leg on the outside edge of the mat. Right leg extended back, toes pointing out. Now this time, take, take the prop or a block if there's a knee pain. Keep a block under the hip or just keep a simple blanket under the left hip for some support. And now press the fingertips onto the ground. Lift the upper body up. Roll the shoulders back. Lift the chin up. And just stay there for a few moments. You can place your palms on the block if you want. Just keep breathing deeply. And now as you breathe in, with the next exhalation, slowly lower yourself, just melting and relaxing onto the pillow below. You can fold your hands, extend them forward, keep experimenting whatever you like. Gently close your eyes and just breathe and let go. Observe the stretches, breathing in and breathing out. This time, feel a good stretch in the left outer thigh, the left hip muscles and the extended right leg hip flexors. And as you breathe, just focus on the pain areas, the regions of stiffness, and allow yourself to guide your breath into those regions of pain and stiffness. And as you exhale, visualize that all the muscles are releasing, opening up, and with exhalation, I'm releasing all the tension that I have accumulated in those regions. Staying with your breath without losing the connection with your breath. Each time the mind wanders, slowly bring your attention back to the mantra of your breath. And that is your mantra to bring yourself to the present moment. And now as we slowly rest into the pose, it's time to release. Take a deep breath in, press your palms onto the ground and slowly raise yourself up consciously. Drag the right foot back, forward, release the knee and just relax. Coming back to the neutral spine position. So that was the pigeon pose. Yes. It could be a little bit difficult for the beginners, but as you practice consistently, you will get the hang of it. Coming to the next posture. Now we have Sarvang Setu Band Sarvang Asana. So again, it is a very, very restorative posture. Sarvang means all the organs. So now the idea here is to give a mild backbend and an inversion, getting the flow of the blood 
to the brain region, specifically your glands, your thyroid gland, the pituitary gland, which is called the Agnya Chakra. So now, again, a lot of diseases that women are facing from are due to hormonal imbalance. And this is a great pose to improve and regulate the hormones. So the pituitary gland is your master gland that regulates all the glandular activity. So by doing this pose, you are achieving to improve the blood flow to the glands, the thyroid gland, and the pituitary to the brain as well. You can watch me once before we start. Keep the pillows, two pillows behind your back and pull them closer to yourself. Extend your legs forward in front of you straight. Catch hold of the pillows and gently lean onto the pillows. Now slide a little bit back till your shoulders reach the floor. They're touching the floor. And extend the feet forward in front of you. Make sure the palms are out and relax, palms facing up. Now for some people, you may get a little bit of lower back pain. So you can add another blanket or something like blocks to rest your legs upon and that will elevate your legs. So blocks is a good idea. Keep the legs on the blocks. So settle into the pose. Make sure the shoulders are relaxed onto the ground and the palms are away from the body, palms facing up towards the ceiling. And as you gently rest, close your eyes, breathing in and breathing out. Focus your awareness into your breathing. Just allow the magic to happen. At the same time, giving a good stretch again, opening the ribcage, encouraging better breathing, and stretching all the muscles, your pectoral muscles, your intercostal muscles, and due to sedentary lifestyle, the ribcage tends to close down. <clears throat> you get a great hunch in the sitting posture. It also improves your posture again by realigning the, the rounded shoulder. So staying with your breath and allowing yourself to breathe better. Focusing your attention onto your thoughts. What am I thinking? And whatever you're thinking, just observe as it is without questioning, without any resistance, just accepting each thought that comes and let it pass. Bring your awareness to your heart center. The heart is opening up in this world. And ask yourself, how am I feeling? What are my emotions? This present moment. And as you rest into that feeling, allow yourself to experience as you witness whatever you feel. And just let it go completely. Without fighting, without questioning. To return. So gently slide forward a little bit, press your palms up to the ground, turn towards the side with the support of your palms, gently raise yourself up, come back to the neutral spine position. Extend your leg forward in front of you and just gently lean forward a little bit to just counteract that part. And the next pose, 
We are coming to is a gentle twist. It can be sent for a few people, but it can be good. So what twist do? When we do practice them towards the end of a session, to restore the equilibrium of the spine by giving and releasing all the tension from the regions of the spine. We also massage the internal abdominal organs of digestion, including your digestion. It is it kind of stimulates the ovarian function due to the compression that is happening to the tissue. We can watch you once again. Take a pillow beneath you and just sit on the edge of the pillow. Send your leg forward into Dandasana. Now first, bending the left leg and getting the left toe foot close to your right foot. Now get the right leg on top. You can extend the leg forward in front of you or just move it closer towards the hand. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to raise the arms up, bend them through the spine with exhalation, twist towards the right side. Twist your torso towards the right side, get the right palm on the pillow and hook the left palm. And get the left palm and hook it on the to the inside. You can also place your palm onto the block and lift the spine up with exhalation. Twist just a little bit more. So the idea is to keep the spine erect and the shoulders down and relaxed. So hold it there, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and exhale completely. Take a deep breath in again, and those who want to deepen the twist can just gently raise the spine up with an inhalation and with exhalation, twist a little bit more, gently turn the neck a little bit. And now taking a deep breath in as you gently release the torso back, raise the arms up. With exhalation, release the arms by the side. Extend the leg forward in front of you. Relax them. Stretch them a little bit. And now coming to the other side. Now this time bending the left leg at the knee. Sorry, bending the right leg at the knee. Get the foot closer. And the left leg on top. Now from here, we're going to raise the arms up, lend them through the spine first. With exhalation, twist your torso towards the left side, get the left palm behind the back, and get the right palm through the inner leg, hooking it there. You can place your palm onto a block for support, and press the palm behind to lift your spine up. With exhalation, twist towards the left side, and softly turn in the neck. Make sure your shoulders are down and relaxed and you're not lifting your shoulders up. So make sure not to turn the neck too much. Make sure the body is comfortable. And now stay here. Take a deep breath in and exhale completely. Take another deep breath in and exhaling. A good way to release all the tension held in the lower regions of your back, which is your lumbar spine, stimulating all the functions of the internal organs, liver, spleen, kidneys, pancreas, intestine. And now again, taking a deep breath in as you release, gently bring the torso back. Raise your arms up above the head with exhalation. Bring your hands down and extend your legs forward in front of you and relax. Remove the pillow from beneath and relax. Coming to the last and the final posture, which is your final relaxation. Again, a very, very restorative posture with my personal experience, which is kind of going hand.
anti-gravity and it's an inversion that gives you a large, large number of benefits. If you are suffering from digestive disorders, thyroid, your poor sleep, heart troubles, your heart rate increases, anxiety, insomnia, this is one perfect posture that you can do. So now, please take a folded blanket. This is a little bit high. So the idea is to get a slope. So we need something high and keep it behind the wall. So you can raise your legs up. So you may not be able to do it right now, but I'm going to show it to you because it's extremely important and it's a wonderful posture when it comes to your legs. So I'm going to place this blanket towards the wall. Maybe I can take another pillow beneath. And if that is too high, you can remove it. So I'm going to place my hips against the wall. And I'm going to raise my legs up. And with control, I am going to push myself down onto the floor so as to create a slope. So you can adjust your pillows and pull them a little bit closer to the upper side of your hips so that you're relaxed. You can gently bend your knees so that there is no hyperextension coming in your knees. You can gently bend the knees, palms away from the body. So now see what this action is doing. It is getting all the blood flow from the top region and getting it to the abdominal organs, irrigating all the abdominal organs, to the heart center, better heart function, to the lungs, better breathing, to the thyroid, better hormonal regulation, to the brain, relaxing all your thoughts. So just staying here, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, for those who do not want to attempt this, you can lie down in Shavasana as well as the final relaxation. And now just try to breathe a little bit deeper, taking a deep breath in all the way down till your belly and exhaling all the air out. Another deep breath in and exhale completely. A few deep breaths in as you surrender yourself and you hold in there. Be aware of how the body is feeling. Where the breath is going. How am I breathing? What am I thinking? And simply observe. moving from this physical body space and just tuning your attention within yourself, encouraging yourself to relax. Breathing in and breathing out. So from now, we're going to just move from here to the final relaxation without holding this pose too much towards the end of the session. Now gently bend the knees, push the hips down onto the floor. So we turn towards the left side, left side, press the palm and gently lift yourself up. Coming and lying down for the final relaxation with the Shavasana. So take a soft blanket and keep it under your neck for some support. Take the two blankets, sorry, take the two pillows, keep it on the underside of your knee. And just relax and lie down with your palms comfortably apart from your body and the feet comfortably apart. Close your eyes and allow the body to submerge into rest. Without having to hold your body, just let your body completely relax down to the floor. Shavasana, meaning in a dead cough, there is no sensation in the body. You are holding no tension, no sensation. Like you're dead. So allow yourself to 
completely relax, release, surrender, and let go. Simply focusing your awareness and bringing it back to your breath. Take a deep breath in, all the way down to your belly, and exhale completely. Take another deep breath in, and with the next breath, relax the body onto the surface below even more. Now bring your attention to your feet, to the toes of the feet. As this go according to the instructions, I'm relaxing my feet. Tell yourself mentally, I'm relaxing my feet, and my feet are relaxed. I'm relaxing my shin, I'm relaxing my calf muscles, I'm relaxing my knees, I'm relaxing my thighs, I'm relaxing my thighs, I'm relaxing my pelvis. I'm relaxing my hips. I'm relaxing my entire spine onto the ground, just like it's melting onto the floor. I'm relaxing the abdomen. I'm relaxing all the abdominal organs inside. My liver, spleen, kidneys, pancreas, Intestine, relaxing my chest, relaxing my arms, let your arms completely lose onto the ground, your fingertips, your palms, relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my neck, relaxing all my facial muscles. Relax the eyes, the eyelids, the forehead, the cheek, the nose, the chin. The lips, the ears. Without holding any tension in your facial muscles. Moving your attention to the crown of your head, taking a deep breath in. And you see the breath swirling into the different regions of your brain as it creates the space. And as you exhale, let all the racing thoughts, releasing it with the exhalation that you do. Allow yourself to feel completely relaxed in the body. And just allow yourself to feel completely relaxed in your mind. Tell yourself three times, I am relaxed, I am relaxed, and I am relaxed. No thoughts about the past, no thoughts about the future. Just simply resting into this present moment and cherishing what I have in the now. Accepting myself just the way I am. And tell yourself, I'm wonderful, I am beautiful, I am complete, and I am enough. Staying with your breath. Just letting go and surrendering completely. Now slowly, it's the time to return to the physical space of your body. So gently coming back out of your relaxation. Move your awareness within. Gently bring your feet together and just slightly move your toes. Move the fingers of your palms. Bring your palms towards the body, and gently turn your body slowly towards the right side. And with control, without a jerk, with the support of your palm, gently come up to sit in a comfortable cross leg 
Slowly and gently, get your palms together in prayer position at your heart center. Thanking yourself for the time that you have taken out for yourself to honor your thoughts, to honor your emotions, to honor your physical body. to honor your own self, your own being, thanking the universal forces, thanking all your teachers, your mentors, your guides, your spiritual masters who have always helped you throughout the journey of this life and still help you. And on that note, you have your palms together to create some warmth and gently place them onto your eyes. Just feel the warmth and absorb it into your eyes. Slowly and gently bring the palms down, you can rub again and then slowly massage the crown of your head, place it there. So rub your palms together again and just bring them down from your shoulders to your arms, gently massaging to your knees. And now you feel the time is there to return gently. And slowly open your eyes and come back to the face. So thanking everyone, thanking all of you for staying through this practice. I hope it was a validation where you could gain some insight as to what can be beneficial for you in certain underlying conditions that are stress based and again, encompassing all the components of yoga, which is mindfulness, the breath, relaxation of the body. And again, the key is to trigger the relaxation response, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, which can have a profound impact and a transformational impact through your entire body. And if you practice this consistently, I can vouch for it you will see some tremendous difference in your life, in every aspect. That is my personal experience, because my approach to yoga was never the dynamic style of yoga. I was also, I was also very the subtle type of a person. And for me, the dynamic forms of fitness, exercising, the fast styles, vinyasa, the shanga, were never, because I used to train the stress response. So what I needed was relaxation. And when I discovered this practice of yin yoga, again, mingled with mindfulness, it was the perfect combination for me to release all that stress. And my healing just quickened. Within a few months, I was able to regain what I could not regain in years. So that's how powerful it was for me. Charu, thank, thank you. you all of you. Lovely session already getting uh, very good messages from people. Uh, there are certain questions if you'd like to answer. So uh, somebody wants to know, can you rename all the asanas that we did in our practice today? Yes. So the first asana, you can also send me recording, right? Okay. The first asana was the child pose, the balasana. The second asana was hook the baddhe cone asana or the reclined bound angle pose. The third asana was the pigeon pose or the ardha kapot asana. The fourth asana, let me remember, sorry, that uh, it was Sikhan uh, Sarvang asana. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, yes. With the pillows at the back and the shoulders, like this, and the forward shoulders. Then the next asana was just a slight forward bend to counteract the hunch that we just did. So it's very, very important when you go into a, 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 the arch position, you need a counter pose for the same to counteract that position. So you can do a wind releasing pose 
power move asana or pasta move asana to counteract that then the next was uh, the twist ardha matsendra asana seated spinal twist to twist the body the torso and the last asana was with reach karni which is the same for me for all the asanas very very extremely restorative if, if you do it before you sleep so we suffer a lot of sleep problems so i was one of them who could not sleep for days when i used to do this asana with the breath first do this this one for a few minutes and then before you go hit the bed or maybe sitting on the bed just try to breathe deeply or for a few minutes like about 11 minutes take deep breaths in and that is going to improve the quality of the sleep to a large extent so at the end was the final relaxation with the shavasana but the three karni which is in the inverted pose also act as a good relaxation as good as shava that's right i think uh, the inversions really help in Absolutely. getting circulation and guys if you feel that you missed some part of the session with charu all the registered participants will receive a recording so don't you worry don't stress you can uh, watch it as much as many times as you want uh, there's another one uh, who says that how is the breathing different in yin yoga versus other yoga form so uh, one is the principle that you are only doing the breathing techniques which are the pranayama right that is separate there is certain breath patterns where you alter the breath into different ratios and patterns and you breathe at a certain rhythm which which right. have very very different benefits now when you come to the dynamic flow right which is just moving from one posture to the another you can't coordinate much on the breath right but if you do something like hatha yoga where you holding the posture for a certain period of time and in yin you are even holding the posture for even more than than hatha yoga so when you move into the posture you can focus into the deep breathing so it is different in the sense because in the dynamic flow you are so engaged with the physical body that it hardly gives you the time to focus on your breath even if you want to it is really not very possible yes maybe if you advance to advance to later stages but when you are holding on to a posture then it gives you the time to move from your physical body to the other dimension of your breath and then you become aware of how the breath is flowing so you kind of encourage yourself to breathe the better you will breathe the better your muscles will open up the better you will take the breath down into those regions where you are in uh, uh, experiencing stiffness and it, and it increases it actually encourages the fascia the muscle the connective tissue to open up better if you encourage yourself to breathe rhythmically and deeply during the holding of the posture right it's all about the awareness so once you stay in a posture that is the idea of yin yoga to move your awareness to the other aspects of breathing that encourages deep release of the tension that is held within your body right yeah okay. so moving on to the next question charu uh, we can how much time is recommended for butterfly and pigeon poses so ideally for beginners you can start from 2 to 3 minutes right now depends how your body if your body is stiff you will not be able to hold it for a long period of time but that is why we encourage the use of props because props will allow the muscles to relax deeply and it will help you to find a comfort edge with your body once you find a comfort edge with your body and the body is relaxed on to the props you will find it better every step that you advance further in your practice your body will open up more and you will be able to hold the postures for a longer period so you can start with 2 minutes and as you advance into your practice you can increase it to 3 to 4 to 5 so 5 is a, an advanced way to hold the posture but yes uh, you can i mean it this can come with the practice you know the more you practice the better you will be so there is no competition right yeah. to do it's just focusing on your improvement day by day advancing slowly and gradually so it's a gradual practice and brings about gradual changes right beautifully put charu and i think it's more about your comfort level where you find relaxation yeah. coming to you yeah. i think 
I feel you probably might need the prop and also see if you, you don't. Might not. You might yeah. not. Yeah. If your body is flexible, there is a progression. So I did it with props because I don't know the kind of people who are attending this. They can be beginners and they can be, so I did not get the progression. So, but like for some postures, I don't need the prop. I would just simply go back without the prop. But in certain things, like with the pre training, the intention was to create a slope, right? Only when I create the slope, that is when I encourage the blood to flow in the anti gravity direction. So, that is where the props become important, right? right. So, that is the idea. It's a very creative practice. And uh, when I place the pillows under my back, I kind of encourage my rib cage to open up and expand. So why I'm placing the particular prop is not because of the progression or regression. I am using the prop so that I can open up the region if I have become like this. With my sedentary lifestyle, sitting in office the whole day, my muscles are in the contracted mode all the time. How do I lengthen those muscles and open my body? So right. with the prop support at the back and staying and holding that posture for a yeah. certain length of time, you yeah. are lengthening those muscles and getting them remodeling the connective tissue. If I would say appropriately, remodeling and getting the length back. And this right. will only come when you hold the posture for a certain length of time. Right. This is about 120 seconds and beyond. And that would come with practice, obviously, and the props will act as a support system, as you said, especially for people who are not flexible. A uh, lot of, lot of uh, love coming from people. They say, I loved your session. Thank you so much. Excellent session. So I think people Thank really you. love the relaxation poses. Uh, we have more questions. Okay. I think we answered most of them. There's last question coming up. Any tips from hypothyroidism? I think Shaina, uh, we did the first session on uh, thyroidism with Sunena Reiki. And if you've already registered, you will get the uh, uh, video to look at. So please take a look. And uh, there are uh, some sessions she explained really well. So you can practice that for thyroid. So Charu, I think we're already past, long yes. past. Yes, I know. But nothing to Oh, I'm so sorry for uh, you know for the extension of the time and you know I seem to lose it when I start teaching and because it's a relaxing uh, uh, style of yoga so it goes a little beyond the time because I took up a little time explaining why we're doing this practice so because yeah. it's kind of a certain new practice for a lot of people so I like to give an insight why we're doing a certain thing and just a little bit of science behind that practice lovely uh, we were really honored to have you on the session we loved hosting you and people loved it so thank, thank you for taking time out and explaining it wonderfully with the reasons and why we're doing those asanas uh, everybody who's joined us today we're going to be sharing this video with you uh, through the email in the coming days and feel free to reach out to me or charu if you have any questions uh, Charu has been tagged on my uh, posts and stories today. So you can find her Instagram account, DM her if you need some personal sessions and uh, she'll be happy to help. So we'll come back tomorrow for another three sets of uh, really nice yoga workshops. So see you guys again and have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful evening, Charu. Thank you so much again for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. And thank you so much, Nadine, for doing this. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.